so much solar energy, they're giving it away. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com with the spinoff from New World Next Week that tries to highlight some of the ways we are winning. We've got that story plus tofu power coming up on this episode. But first, poo power. It's been around for several years. You can find articles going back three or four years on turning poop into power, but a new long piece on Scientific American written by Coco Liu, Poo to Power Breakthrough Appears in China, has the story back in headlines all around. And we can take a little bit of text from the Daily Caller. Does China have the right idea using poop for power? China has a new solution to their sludge problem. Burn it for energy. In Shangyang, there is a factory that does just that, taking waste from humans and animals, as well as grease from restaurants, fats, oils, and gas, fog. They are able to heat the mix, called sludge, to a point where the methane gas is released, a process called co-digestion. Half of the resulting methane is used to power the plant itself, while the other half is processed into clean natural gas, which has a range of other options for use. Meanwhile, right here in Oregon, the same process is taking place as a joint effort with Clean Water Services, the Energy Trust of Oregon, and the Oregon Department of Energy. The treatment facility in Oregon at Dunham has already tripled its renewable energy output utilizing this technique and has reduced energy costs by a staggering $800,000. And then the catch, what is yet to be seen is whether or not this massive reduction in cost will translate to the consumer. And that's the situation that we wait on in a lot of ways, and we'll learn even more about that in a couple of moments when we take the business sector and their view on a lot of these positive for the plebes developments. Our second story on Good News Next Week, episode 21 for June 6th, 2016, was submitted to us on Twitter at DMosserBos. So much solar electricity. Chile is giving it away for free. Chile's main solar power plants are supplying so much electricity that they have had to give it away for free or face prices going down. The glut has been driven by the country's booming copper industry. Chile's growing energy demand has prompted the development of 29 solar farms to supply the energy grid. Booming mining production and economic growth have been the main drivers. The country is expected to install almost 1.4 gigawatts of solar power this year, up from 371 megawatts in 2005, according to Bloomberg, which is enough to supply hundreds of thousands of homes. Now, we will include the link over to Bloomberg, just as we include the link to everything, everything we say and play in these episodes will be included in the show notes for you. And of course, we encourage you to comment and share and like and do all the social networking to help spread the word of listener-supported alternative media, especially solutions-oriented ways we are winning, like Good News Next Week. When we turn to the business speak of Bloomberg, we see why they report a story like this as a catastrophe for the banksters. So they even note when power companies aren't giving away electricity, it's cheap. And the issue may limit future development because the uncertain revenue means banks will be reluctant to finance new power plants. And we can show by the graph how much power has gone down in Chile as time has gone by. Now, our third and final story this week on a power-oriented episode of Good News Next Week has a slew of ways called cool new alternative energy sources. Now, we're talking about tofu power. And in a lot of ways, just as we talk about on these episodes week after week, you'll find a lot of ways to pick apart the good and find the dark lining to the silver clouds. Tofu has a host of issues, and we will include that in the show notes, like an interview with Dr. Kayla Daniel about the long-term health consequences of eating a bunch of tofu. However, Smithsonian Magazine points out that in small towns on the Indonesian island of Java, making tofu is a home business. The process uses a bunch of water, nearly four gallons of water per pound of tofu. Acetic acid is also added to the water to make the tofu solidify, and the resulting acidic wastewater traditionally goes to waste. But now, thanks to a new initiative, the wastewater can be treated with bacteria to create biogas, which is then used to power stoves in the tofu makers' homes. This cycle is using it cycle is cleaner rather 
than using traditional stove fuel and saves the tofu makers on gas costs. Right now, about 150 home tofu makers in the village of Kalasari are trialing the tofu power project, which the government hopes to spread across the country soon. Now, again, we talk about the ways in which the powers that shouldn't be are trying to force the plebes into eating bugs and getting by with less because of the supposed resource wars. We always want to try and point out their divide and conquer tactics and how much a lot of these things are about the idea of decentralization and that we we are able to print these things open source ourselves and decentralize this and be able to do these things in our community that's really where the rubber meets the road so to speak on this power oriented edition of good news next week you want more power all right dubai is building the world's largest concentrated solar power plant it will be much bigger than the ivanpah facility in california when it's done 12 times as much power will be generated I don't know if you've ever tried e-bikes, but they are quite interesting, and I actually got the opportunity to test drive one about a year ago, and that's another way, again, that you're going to see people essentially making the decisions for themselves. Now, you definitely know something's going on when Ford has now gotten into the act of e-bikes. Of course, you can find them not through Ford, but you see that, again, the only way we've been pushing back is with the food and health, and that's a lot of the ways that we are winning. So when you show them we're not going to eat their crap and we're not going to drive their garbage, they'll scramble to change their ways. More bikes like India gifting 2,000 bikes to girls in Nepal, hopefully encouraging them to do more school and do more literacy. Our good buddy James Corbett, my co-host of New World Next Week, who's the inspiration for helping us do this Good News Next Week spinoff show. Open source DIY machine recycles household plastic into new products. And that's another way, again, that hopefully the 3D printing revolution can be a lot of ways to decentralize, repeal, and take our power back. Again, the caveat always is, what if you're making 3D printed things of crappy material? And we're spreading that crappy, toxic material. In a lot of ways, we're going to have to use, just like we're all using better ingredients for our foods, we're going to have to probably use better ingredients for our 3D printing as well as time goes by. My buddy Jared, who rebroadcasts all the live media monarchy broadcasts via radio confluence, he noted that in Rochester, Minnesota, the Parks Department is going to go pesticide free and right now noting it's just a pilot project so folks in the minnesota area make sure you reach out to your parks department and thank them and tell them you do not want your kids dancing and playing in glyphosate my buddy mike in philly huge thanks to him for thanking places like media monarchy for pushing community food as we talk about week after week it seems like another place is adding a community fridge Mike also runs a new site called Jet News, where you can read about food pranchers and all the other news in the world. We reached the end of this Good News Next Week episode, and there's no shortage of Muhammad Ali stories, but hey, I got one as well. He actually has ties to my hometown of Fayetteville, West Virginia. Growing up there, it was always common knowledge that the chief of police in town, Tony Hunsacker, was Muhammad Ali's first professional fight. And he wasn't even Muhammad Ali yet. He was still Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay knocked him out pretty well and became a huge superstar. Tony Hunsacker, of course, chief of police in a small West Virginia town for a long, long time. As Tony was getting older, and it's amazing in some ways, someone who would do boxing as a career would live longer than <laughs> chief of police in a small town. But as Tunney was getting older, and Tunney was what we always called him as kids, Muhammad Ali came to town one day to meet with Tunney. And I used to deliver newspapers then, twice a week, and I was in junior high. This has got to be the early 90s. I just missed Muhammad Ali in the middle of town, stopping a school bus to get on and sign autographs for what were basically my classmates. I was at the spot downtown picking up my newspapers that I had to go deliver on my route. So I still missed Muhammad Ali, but if I wouldn't have been there picking up newspapers, I wouldn't have even been that close to seeing Muhammad Ali. So that's my Muhammad Ali story to throw onto the pile of a little bit of good news. And of course, the best news about 
someone like Muhammad Ali. And again, we always caution against any type of externalized saviors, but of course, noting how anti-war he was. And that is something that can always win, and that is non-violence. Seems like the world wants to get violent and wants you to divide and conquer and spend your time doing a bunch of two minutes hate. Hey, guess what? We're not going to do that, and we're going to lean into the positive. We're going to lean into the solutions, and we're going to lean into ways that we are winning, and I hope that you will join us and support our work. If you got good news stories going on in your community, you can always tweet them using hashtag good news next week. Or if you've made it this far without being on the tweets or on the Fed book, I commend you. And that's a good news next week story in and of itself. But you can always email me, james at mediamonarchy.com. This has been your Good News Next Week, episode 21 for Monday, June 6, 2016. I am James Evan Pilato reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Yeah.